Welcome to Manowaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm CB Drogi. This week, Metamorphosis by Sarah L. Uckelman. No lab is ever entirely silent. There's always some machinery running, a computer crunching data, a refrigerator containing samples, or even merely the compressed air system regulating the temperature and the humidity. But those noises were part of an ever-present continuous background buzz. They weren't really noise. This silence was different. Dr. Stella Farvik sat at one of the long white desks, and her assistant, Dr. Alex Shaheen, sat at the other. Finally, the silence bothered her enough that she paused in going over her records to speak. What did you want to be when you grew up? Her assistant, a decade her junior, still trying to overcome his awkwardness about working one-on-one with one of the foremost biochemists in the country, still trying to prove himself equal to the task, looked up from his careful note-taking in surprise. You know, when you were a child, what did you dream of? Astronaut? Doctor? Horse veterinarian? Or is that only girls? Alex smiled, and then flushed slightly at the memory. I wanted to be a garbage collector when I grew up. I wanted to ride on the back of a big truck, wearing that uniform, lifting bins above my head as if they weighed nothing. My God, they were like TV superheroes come to life right there before me in front of my very eyes. The flush receded and he shrugged. I still do enjoy getting my hands dirty, he said, laughing self-depreciatingly. He did, she reflected. It was one of the reasons she'd tapped him for this particular project. If it went well, if it went as she hoped, they were both going to get particularly messy. She resisted the urge to go over the formulas in front of her one more time. One more time wasn't going to change them. How about you? Hmm? How about you? Alex repeated. Some of his built-in shyness seemed to have fallen away. Stella understood. There was something about being alone in a lab after hours, the only ones with an experiment that needed their presence, that stripped away the conventional barriers. What did you want to be when you were young? Her voice was soft when she answered. A butterfly. A real butterfly. And then I would fly to the moon. Stella almost wished she hadn't spoken. The exchange of minor intimacies changed many things. Alex snorted. At least no one laughed at me when I said I wanted to be a garbage man. Now Stella was sure she wished she hadn't spoken. The door to the storage cupboard was locked, as it should be, and Stella had to swipe her ID twice before it opened. I really do need to get that replaced, she thought idly, replacing the worn card in her pocket. No. Actually, I don't, she corrected herself, not if everything goes as planned. Stella flipped the light on and shoved three mops and a bucket to the side. Alex hung back. The cupboard was full of the detrius of years, and two people would not fit. Besides, Stella knew exactly what she was looking for. The cardboard box was remarkable only for its size, nearly as tall as her. Despite its height, Stella was able to drag it out easily. It weighed very little. Still, it was awkward, and she was grateful for Alex's help as the two of them wrangled the box onto a hand truck. She smiled to herself, a bit smugly at the curiosity that clearly hovered around his lips. You'll know soon enough. She took the hand truck down the hall to the autopsy room, the only place she was sure she would have a big enough table for their needs. Alex, still keeping his questions to himself, helped her load the box onto the table and then sliced through the tape. Take the bottom end, Stella said, and lift. He stared at the large, tubular shape Stella now eased out, nearly as long as the table and almost as wide. It had a glossy golden sheen, slightly too shiny to be plastic. He wrapped his knuckles against it. What is that? It looks like... 
It looks like a chrysalis. Got it in one, she said. A very high-tech one, though. Look inside. The inside was covered in a thin padding, from which extruded a mass of wires, some connecting to electrodes, some to small electronics, some too tangled to tell. What's it for? Exactly what it looks like. He blinked after her wordlessly as she crossed the room to the bench, where she'd already laid out the syringe and the tourniquet, next to the cocktail of iodothoronines, ectosone, and prothoracicotropic hormones she'd had Alex bring from the lab. Sudden realization slid over Alex's face, and he shifted from foot to foot nervously. Don't tell me you're going to pull a marshal. That's exactly what I'm going to do, and why I need your help. Once I've administered the chemicals, I don't know how much time I'll have. I'm relying on you to make sure everything gets hooked up properly. She pushed a stack of papers into his hands. Take a look through them. Take as much time as you need. It's important you get it right. The pages outlined how and where the wires were to be connected, and how the data the sensors fed to the microcomputers in the chrysalis could be accessed. She rolled the chrysalis onto its side, exposing an access port. Here's where you'll plug in. While he read, Stella took off her shoes and her lab coat. Next came her t-shirt and trousers. Her skin pricked in the refrigerated air. She brushed back her hair and twisted it into a knot. Alex's cheeks turned pink when he realized what came next. Do you want me to turn around? Stella shrugged. She'd long passed the point of letting such things bother her. One final step. Stella scribbled something onto a piece of paper and slid it carefully between the silk padding and the hard outer shell. Then she climbed inside the chrysalis. Are you ready? she asked, and was pleased with the firmness of his reply, even though the blush had receded, leaving a slight green tinge behind. Then she took a deep breath, wrapped the tourniquet round her arm, and plunged the needle into her vein. Dr. Alex Shaheen had nearly lost his job over the incident. Lab safety codes and codes of ethics were invoked and wielded like clubs, and a whisper started that he should be tried for murder. It was weeks before he could go more than two hours without some vice-dean or senior professor shouting at him. Eventually he convinced them he had no idea of Dr. Farvik's intentions, before it was too late to dissuade her, that he was afraid of trying to for fear that would cost him his job, that he had never dreamed the purpose the chemicals he'd synthesized for her would be put to. The detailed instructions she'd left him helped. They were clearly written for someone who had no knowledge of what she had planned. Eventually, the whispers died down, the ethics charges were dropped, and someone in the lab found a safe place to store the cocoon. Alex continued to monitor the data streaming from the sensors, but gave up attempting to understand it. He had no way of knowing if the experiment was working or not. He went to the lab as usual, and no one mentioned the chrysalis. Few people talked to him at all, but he noticed how often they would end up casually walking by the chrysalis, hanging in the corner. No one would admit it. No one wanted to tarnish their careers as his had been. But he knew. Everyone was fascinated by Dr. Farvik's experiment. And everyone wanted to know how it would turn out. After five weeks passed, Alex's hopes began to falter. It was such a careful balance of chemistry. If only one variable was wrong, Dr. Farvik would be dead inside. Not murder, but suicide. Each morning he visited the chrysalis, and then he tried to put everything but the data out of his mind. Hurry! Alex! Alex, you better come quick! The chrysalis. He sprinted to the other end of the lab. The chrysalis gave a great shudder, and then slowly split from bottom to top. As the casing tore, Alex caught a brief flutter out of the corner of his eye, and he bent instinctively to pick up what had fallen. He didn't look at it. He looked instead at what was emerging. A butterfly, great and beautiful, wings as tall as a woman and white as a lab coat. Hey, what's that? Alex looked down at what was in his hand. It was a piece of paper with something written on it. It said, My mother never laughed at me. Become a scientist, she told me. Find out how to change people into butterflies, and then you can become a butterfly. Thank you. 
This has been Metamorphosis. Written by Sarah L. Uckelman. Manowaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast is supported by patrons on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash manowaker to find out more. The Flash Fiction Podcast theme song is by Kevin McLeod. Manowaker Studios Director of Dice is Ben Baston. The podcast is produced, edited, and narrated by me, C.B. Drogi. You can follow me on Twitter at C-B-D-R-O-E-G-E. Thanks for listening. On the next installment of Flash Fiction Podcast, he snuffed the air, sampling. Our hearts beat like thunder within our chests, echoing the roiling storm clouds building in his head, preparing for us.